Welcome to the final segment of Durham TV Viewer Question Week for April 2012. Today's episode will feature questions from DurhamTV.com viewers. And stay tuned until the end of the episode for the question of the day. If you answer it correctly, you'll have a chance to win a free skincare product. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and welcome to Durham TV. Today's first question comes from Jessica, and she asks, how can I stop the acne on my lip line, and will it go away by itself? Jessica, usually acne on the lip line is composed of blackheads, and you can actually see the enlarged pores with little black clogs inside. Usually it results either from lip balm or lipstick right on the very edge of the vermilion, and the reality is those clogs are kind of tough to induce to go away by themselves. So usually they require being expressed by a dermatologist or a facialist just with a little bit of pressure with a special instrument that puts the pressure on the outside of the clog when you push down so it allows the material to come up and out by itself. So in terms of whether it's going to go away by itself, usually not. A tough place to treat with exfoliants because it's right on the edge of the mucous membrane. But perhaps the most important thing I can tell you, since I'm sure you are going to get them removed, the most important thing I can tell you is probably what's causing them. And again, that goes back to lip balm or lipstick. So you may want to rethink the products that you're using so after you get these cleared up, they don't just come right back. Second question is from Erica. Erica says she has a plantar wart on the bottom of her foot. It's been there for five years. She's tried liquid nitrogen. It worked, then it came back. She tried salicylic acid. The skin on the foot seems to regrow faster than she can put on the acid, so what should she do? And how does she ensure that the tentacle blood vessels are killed? Also, will improving my immune system get rid of it? If so, how? Well, a lot of questions, but all appropriate questions to warts. And the problem with warts, uh, and the reason that I say uh, half seriously, that warts have done more to ruin the reputation of dermatologists than anything else we treat is because first of all the warts caused by a viral infection and this viral infection lives in what's called an immunologic window meaning that the, your immune system doesn't see it and if it doesn't see it it can't fight it there's nothing wrong with your immune system this is a localized decrease in immunity your immunity to everything else is normal and quite frankly I know of no effective way that one can stimulate or uh, increase their immunity. So we have this virus causing this infection and the body isn't help fighting it and as a result of that we're using all of these other techniques such as uh, salicylic acid, liquid nitrogen and so on to cause some inflammation. And the reason we want to cause inflammation is because if we do, inflammation means the immune system is working there. And if we can wake up the immune system at the site of the wart and activate the immune system that way, then the immune system may finally recognize the wart. And once it does, it then rejects it and makes it go away. So the, the real issue here is how do you best accomplish that? And you asked about the tentacles of the blood vessels. Well, I find that the best way of treating warts at this point is to actually use a laser that tries to destroy the blood vessels that are feeding this enlarging growth, the wart. So we use lasers after we remove the overlying dead skin, and those laser treatments uh, try to destroy the blood supply and kill the wart that way. But let me assure you that no technique for removing warts medically works with any predictability and just stay with it because at a certain point your body is going to recognize the virus and it is going to knock it out. Next question comes from Christine and she says, Hi Dr. Schultz, does moisturizer reduce, reduce the effectiveness of tretinoin, vitamin C serum, or hyaluronic acid? Should moisturizer be used at the same time, a different time, or is it not needed? Well, in terms of where the moisturizer is needed, you need moisturizer for one of two reasons. Either because your skin is dry, which we usually perceive as either a sensation of tightness or visually as flaking. And the other reason we use moisturizer is to help hydrate skin that has fine lines and wrinkles to help temporarily reduce the appearance of those fine lines and wrinkles. 
So that's the reason to use moisturizer. In terms of its effect on your other skincare products, certainly moisturizer on top of tretinoin is not a problem. Moisturizer on top of vitamin C is not a problem. And moisturizer on top of hyaluronic acid isn't a problem, but hyaluronic acid-based products are moisturizers. So I'm not sure that you would really need to use a moisturizer on top of hyaluronic acid. The next question comes from Dahlia. And Dahlia says, Hi, Dr. Schultz. I'm wondering if Retin-A could be prompting cold sores. I commenced using it in January and have had two or three cold sores. Um, in this short space of time, which probably would have been over a period of six to eight weeks. Uh, Dahlia, we know that cold sores can be reactivated by trauma. So whether it's pulling on, the lip, uh, pulling on your lip by a dentist, or you're pulling on your lip, or your boyfriend just rubbing on your lip when he's kissing you, we know that trauma and even, even uh, ultraviolet damage from the sun. We know that any kind of trauma can trigger a cold sore. The question is, does Retin-A constitute enough of an injury? And I think it's very unlikely that Retin-A is causing your cold sores. Retin-A can cause irritation, but if it was causing enough irritation to trigger your cold sore, I think you'd stop using the retin just on the basis of the irritation without considering its relationship to cold sores. So it's probably not a factor in your recurring cold sores. I would recommend getting a prescription for an oral antiviral like Valtrax, which will certainly shorten the duration of the cold sore outbreak um, the next time you have an episode. And you can get that prescription from your regular doctor or your dermatologist. This question comes from Alexandra. I'm an athlete and I exercise twice a day. I shower twice a day after my workouts. However, I only wash my hair once a day. Everyone tells me that I'm damaging my skin and hair by showering so often. However, it's just not possible for me to shower less as I sweat extensively during a workout. Am I harming my skin and hair by showering so often? Alexandra, I'm happy to tell you, you certainly are not harming anything by showering often. First of all, when you sweat, sweat is just water and salt. So just the water, even without cleanser, just the water of the shower is going to wash off all of the water, um, um, all the water of the sweat and all the salts of the sweat. The only place you need to use your cleanser uh, each time you shower is in your personal areas, which are closed areas, which promote the growth of bacteria, and it's the growth of bacteria that actually cause odors. So in your personal areas, your hands, your face, and you may want to wash your hair uh, twice a day if you're sweating a lot, and there's no reason why a gentle shampoo should do anything to harm your hair if you're using it twice a day, and you mentioned you're only using it once a day. Uh, the best thing that you can do to try to restore any uh, of the moisture that you lose during exercise is after your exercise, pat your skin dry, and then apply a, a, a moisturizer just to help retain uh, uh, moisture. But there's no harm in doing what you're doing, and the exercise is great for you. The next question is from um, Samantha, and she says, if I stop taking antibiotics, will it regrow pimples? then why should I take antibiotics? Samantha, the reality is that when antibiotics work uh, for your acne and reduce the breakouts, your skin sort of has a memory. Before the antibiotics, it was used to breaking out, so it continued to break out. As a result of using the antibiotics, when you've had success, you've stopped the breakouts, and you then continue the antibiotic under your doctor's directions for um, a few more weeks in the state where you're just not breaking out anymore. At that point, instead of stopping the antibiotics abruptly, the way we usually do after a regular infection, we gradually reduce the dose of the antibiotic. And we sort of fool your body into thinking that you're still taking the antibiotic. So if you took the pill three times a day, it would be reduced under your doctor's supervision to twice a day, and then a week or two later to once a day, and then perhaps to one pill every other day. And over that period, of four or six weeks as you're tapering the pill down, you're fooling your body into thinking it's still taking it, and then when you finally stop taking the antibiotic, you don't have any more breakouts. The acne doesn't come back. 
or it usually doesn't, for several months or even a longer period of time. So if antibiotics are working, yes, continue them until your doctor tells you when and how to stop them. So that's it for this month's Viewer Questions Week. And don't forget, the subjects from so many Derm TV episodes come from your questions, which are so great. So please keep sending them in, and I'll keep answering as many of them as I can. Now for today's skincare trivia. Answer today's question correctly within three days of this episode's airing, and you'll be entered in a drawing to win a free skincare product. Submit your answer at dermtv.com trivia. Today's question is, I told Christine that applying moisturizer over her tretinoin won't adversely affect the tretinoin. What class or type of skincare products should not be put on top of tretinoin because tretinoin is such a fragile ingredient and will be inactivated by these types of products? And don't forget, you can find the answer to this and all questions in past Derm TV episodes. Please join me again at DermTV.com. If you have a question, please send it to me by visiting DermTV.com slash question. I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and thank you for watching today.